Hello, hello, and welcome to Quackalope. Although, wait, this, is, this isn't this, this is going a, on my channel. This is a board game go channel. This is going on my channel. Okay, yeah. cool. So, hello, hello, and welcome. No, that, that, that's, that's not that's how not this works. How I do. Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is how this video starts with um the stuff, the stuff, and the stuff. I believe so, that's how your channel starts almost every time, basically. consistently. Now you already know the drill because mm -hmm. you saw the title down below. Yes, this is the top ten worst games in the... Quackalope's collection. And I have no idea what he's picked. Yes, correct. Yeah. Do you have any idea? Uh any at all oh you know at least one because you saw me looking at one either way we'll get to that we'll come back to that so genuinely i probably don't know at least seven of these i would say you probably don't and some of them are gonna be really fun oh god now, first and foremost if you haven't uh -huh. already or if, after this video your choice i yeah. will have a link down below to when you did this oh yeah to my one of my most disliked videos of all time it was great yeah. it was the top 10 worst games great. in board game Co's collection and i want to set the stage by saying i refuse to make the same mistakes you did i'll make different ones all right listen different listen ones. if mistakes you mean going out of my way to drive to your house getting stuck in a traffic jam still filming and producing a video and choosing your games within a 30 minute time span having to because your collection is refined and good having to choose things like terraforming mars that i hadn't played yet yeah and you didn't i don't think you yeah. had the tone people didn't understand that there's a certain sure. degree of fun You're around right. this conversation You're right that being said i saw the kind of hate you got for that video <laughs> And so I wanted to be very sure that I picked games that I, I think can... I think the same people that gave me crap on that video though also appreciated my what I think of Terraforming oh, Mars video. Wait till you get well, so that's true. So, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But wait till you get the end of my list because I have ten games. I'm gonna pick at them in certain ways. Okay. They are genuine critiques and complaints, not like oh this game looks bad. Although maybe with one of them I can't remember. Well, we'll come to it. Excuse you. Okay. Well, and excuse so excuse you. And to that end, I am saving the best for last. So oh, if you want to skip God. to the bottom, I will oh, have timestamps down below. It's going to be fun. Uh-huh. And starting off, and I'm going to just rattle off the side here. Just don't, uh -huh. don't pay no attention to You me knew what time. I was bringing, too. I'm going to start off with numbers 8, 9, and 10 all at once. And here we go. Which have you played from these? Yeah. Uh, all but The Alchemists. Oh, you haven't played The Alchemists. Okay, let's start with The Alchemists. Get that out of the way quickly and uh -huh. easy. So, the reason I'm starting with these three, do you know why I'm starting this with This has three? all the expansions inside of it as well. Doesn't matter. Not yeah. any better. I, well, I'm just, I, I don't know, actually. I'm just letting you know. I'm just clarifying. So, it feels like it. Honestly, it feels like it. This is supposed to be a fantastic game, but hard to learn. It is a fantastic game. Yeah. It is. I mean, well, maybe. So, these three I'm starting with very simply because recently I did a video. Oh, yes. Make it all pretty looking. Exactly. Crackle. This is my channel. What do you care? So. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <still> just. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I recently did a video. Ten games I don't want to play again. Is this on that? All three of these are on that. All three you are on You made my job that. easy. Meaning, genuinely, there are not a lot of games out there that I don't want to play again. There are games I prefer, but games I don't want to play again. Really? In fact, every other game I played on this list, oh no, actually no. Six of the other seven games that I picked on here are games I would play again. Okay, Alchemists. This game I have heard fantastic things about. I have not had a chance to play it's it because rated. of the barrier to entry. I, Jan loved it. I think it's in the top 100 on board game. I game. believe it is as well. It's I like mean, the top, the high end. Why? Well, so my thing with it is I think that the game is overly complex compared to the amount of reward you get out of it. Yeah. You know, it's going to be akin to a game you've actually played recently called Dungeon Pets. It falls in sure. a similar cat, also by sure. CGE. Yeah, and it by is. The way, You're true. For its worth, CGE has had the best year in 2020 from any company for me. Lost Rooms of Arnak yeah. and Under Falling Skies. Yeah. Love them. Other games they have as well. Big fan. But Alchemist and... Uh, Didn't need it for you. And, and uh, Dungeon Pets. Both are games that I find overly complicated for the experience they deliver. Also, it has an app. I'm generally not a fan of that. But okay. not the end of the world. Older but... style games, too. Yeah. Well, not that yeah. old. It's, it's, well, Dungeon Pets and Alchemist. I mean, they Dungeon are, Pets they are older. aggressively popular... And a yep. bit older, because, I mean, you have to admit, the generation of board games over the last five years yep. has changed, I mean, it's changed the game. Now, fun fact, by the way, literally, again, I did ten games. I'm upset that you don't like this one. There's a fourth game that was interesting, so I didn't grab it, because I wasn't sure if you played it. Uh -huh. There's a fourth game. I mean, again, I only did ten games yeah. that I wouldn't play again, yeah. and you have four of them. Yeah. The other one is Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth. I'm so excited to try that one. But you haven't played it. No, I haven't. So you can't overly defend it. It's fine. I can't, I can't really defend it, but... I, I got that one because I've heard great things about I that. I've heard like, tons of great things. You yeah. should still try it. Yeah. I do not like... You don't like I, story, though. No, no, no. It's not my issue. My issue is I don't like You don't like games. good games. That's my issue. Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Terraforming Mars. You don't like Blood ducks. Race. I don't like ducks. That's yeah. true. But I don't like games that you're staring at the screen as much as you're staring at the game. And Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, as well-rated as it is, as okay. loved as it is, has that. 100%. That sucks. Yeah, it's not my thing. I didn't realize that. Not my thing at all. But hey, you might like it. You, you like stop it. ruining my collection. Well, what about these ones? You want to right. stand up right. for Ishtar or Pipeline? Let's get into this. Let's get into this. 
I think a lot of people would be willing to stand up for Ishtar and Pipeline. Uh, surprisingly few people stood up for Ishtar in my video. Just saying. I'm, uh, I'm not one of those on either of these games. Yeah. I think, I think they are both... Now, am I as extreme as I would not play these again? No. So, so no. Pipeline Pipeline was a rewarding puzzle. I liked the way things uh, chained it's together and triggering. Uh, I just didn't... I just didn't get into the aesthetic of the game as much as the mechanics of it. And for me, that's a barrier to entry, right? Makes sense. I would love to give this game away. This game is on... Because I know a lot of people love this game. Yeah. Uh, and so this is on my list of, I think someone would be very happy to receive this copy This of is, from all the games that I have... Ooh, maybe. From most of the games that I've chosen yeah. today, I think this is the best game design. Yeah. I don't like this style of game. This game has a huge degree of thinkingness with a minimal degree of player interaction, or at least based on my experiences, and I don't like that ratio. If I'm going to have a heavily thinky game, yeah. I want there to be a lot of interaction. If it's heavily thinking and it's just my own thing, I'd rather play a solo game. And it felt like a solo game with more people in the way. Sure, I hear you. Ishtar, what's going on with this one? A it's beautiful lighter. art, beautiful aesthetic. Uh, I enjoy the the puzzle of like spreading out your yep. garden. I've played this probably four or five times. I've played it half the time. It's uh, it's just, it's not my favorite. But it's also not a bad game. I would recommend this to people who are looking for a gateway game. I'd give this to a family any day of the week. Yeah, I think for me, I wasn't looking for a gateway experience here. When you got and into it. I, it, was, it was lighter than I was interested in and didn't give me enough payoff. But I think I think this is a solid... But can we just, I mean, for a moment... It's beautiful. It is beautiful. That's why I got it. I got it because I mean, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's Bruno Cathala, and I like him. He's done a lot of things that I really like. I think he's done with the Cyclades, too, which is one of my favorite games of all time. I just did a review of that one. That was fun. So... I don't, I don't agree with all of your. I don't hate your picks though. So oh, far. I don't oh, wait till my number picks. ten. Wait till my actually my number nine and ten. It's gonna be fun. Look Time stamps down below. Just make sure my Kingdom Death boxes have moved. Kingdom nope. Death boxes. The three, the three, the hey, three don't copies. Don't look no, no. You. I'm looking at the three copies of Kingdom Death I have in the room, and all of them are still in position. So all I'm saying is, you said Kingdom Death, and the dog started barking. Someone else doesn't like that game either. Okay, this one was a bit of an easy pick, and is also one I would not play again. This is going to be Dungeonology, The Expedition. Now, it's in-stream. And I, I, I tried to avoid in-stream games because I didn't want to pick games you haven't played. Have you played this game? Do you know why it's in-stream? Why is it in-stream? Because of opinions like yours. Mm, yeah, so Dungeonology. I wanted to love this game. And then it it's came, it, it showed up, and everyone went, huh. This was a huge letdown for me. I Absolutely know. Absolutely huge. And it's why it's still in shrink, because I haven't I haven't got it. I haven't motivated myself enough. But I wanted to love this game. I, I You're talking to... T preaching to the choir. I backed this game on Kickstarter. I got everything for it. I, it's absolutely gorgeous. The idea, the premise, the, yeah. all that. And to me, this game ultimately comes down to playing cards to get in each other's way. It's take that for the sake of of take that. It's not take that because of some clever mechanism. Like Terraforming Mars has a degree of take that, of targeting someone's plants, doing whatever. Sure. And Terraforming Mars will not be on this list because I'm not crazy. Worst games will be on this list. Maybe. We'll see. In any case, Dungeonology is a game I wanted to love. I need I need to do a confirmation bias on Terraforming Mars. You I need should. to play it a little you bit should. more, but I need to dig into that. Oh, I want to do a confirmation bias in a different game. My number 10 on this list. In any case. You keep hinting. I keep hinting. I hate, and oh, you God. you people, timestamps down below, you can find oh, out what's going on. He God. has to wait a few minutes. So Dungeonology is a game. And Ludus Magnus Studio, by the way, this is led by Ludus Magnus Studio. I actually just played DEI from them. DEI, I love. Yeah, which is interesting to me because they haven't always been victorious. They've had some solid ones. Yeah. Black uh, Black Rose yeah. Wars is supposed to be a solid game. I haven't played it halfway through the sure, book. But I'm saying like they, they're one of those publishers that are trying to be established names you always count on. Yeah. They haven't got there yet. Correct. But I agree. but it sounds but they, like they may be getting there. But what's interesting about this space, this is a conversation about the space in general, what's interesting is most established publishers don't knock hits out of the park again and again and again. I do. What do you mean you do? You're not an established publisher. I'm saying, but like, if you think of Fantasy Flight, you think of Rio Grande, you think of Z-Man Games, yeah. they don't have established hits every single time. Sure. On Kickstarter, it's a little bit of a different narrative. You kind of, because of how much money you're asking in a public Everyone, space... Everyone, and you're asking for time. You're asking, asking for, for time. an investment of attention. So and... you need a little bit of a higher track record. And DEI, don't get me wrong, they have some solid games, but they also have some misses. And I think I think yeah. this one was a miss, which which definitely hurt them in future Kickstarters. There you go. You can pass it on that, that side of the table. So let me ask you this. Yes. Do I ever open this one before I get rid of it? I think it's charming in some aspects that you would appreciate. But it, it the idea, the main thing that I don't like about it is there wasn't enough of a game behind just getting in each other's way. I hate that I don't think you're wrong. 
I, I don't know. I mean, and I've seen in general. Continue. One, I looked. This is of, not as fun on the other side. Oh well, the next one is fun. Not, could you hand me that on the way? Just, nope. Nope. Just oh, cycle this? that towards oh, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that'd, be, that'd be great. Just that's gonna be the least critical thing I'm talking Whew. about. Ready for uh, speaking of established publishers who knock it out of the park every single time. Oh stop! Oh stop! Get that game out of here. This war of mine. Or not. Maybe you're wrong on this one. At least, come on, comment section. At least attack him on this one. What this, are you doing? This will be the only game on this list uh -huh. that I have not played. Yeah. We, uh, why? Well, well, why for, is it here? Why is it the only one? Yeah. Because I saw your video and that went horribly. And why uh, is it here? <laughs> why is it here? So this was a moment of inspiration. I was looking around the room. Mm. And by the way, for what it's worth, I have the same problem you do. I had a struggle to find things that I was willing to legitimately critique. Sure. And then I found all these games, including this War of Mine. All right, well, you didn't have this to War of Mine could have just stopped at the first part of the sentence. Is a punishing, uh -huh. punishing, yeah, it's brutal story. Yeah, I don't emotionally. Has real is real life not enough for any of you? No. Like what no. about this what is about a this is a beautiful failure? this is a beautiful uh, exploration into uh, a post apocalyptic world, into human suffering, into into what you're willing to do in order to survive. I mean, what's the win rate on this game? <sighs> like. 20%? So what's the message here? That you're not going to live. Okay. The message is life <laughs> is brutal and you won't win. It is. We it have is, every but, day but, for but that. But there's, a, but there's a value in identifying and, 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 and recognizing that life is hard and that is okay. Like, I, I really love games that don't shy away from the fact that war and life and post apocalypse like, that, that there is tragedy here that you can face. Why do you play board games? What is the point? What is the journey? What is the, what is the purpose here? I play board games to connect with the people across the table. And who do you connect with when this you play this This is a solo game. game. This is a solo <laughs> game. Okay. And there we go. I think you can move on from that. No. This war of mine. Oh my gosh. If you like, if you like post-apocalyptic worlds, if you like challenging games, if you like, if you like an actually good and rewarding, but punishing both emotionally and, and mechanically experience, um, you're so wrong on I this. I resent this game's you're existence. So, you're so wrong on You resent this no, game's no, no, ex I, I, existence? Let me finish the sentence. Let you finish you sentence. finished the sentence, and then I am, I started... You resent this game's existence. I resent existence. this game's How existence. How dare you? Because... How dare you? This is a well-rated game. It's by Awaken Realms. They put out solid games. Uh -huh. It's one that I want to try. The idea, the narrative, the journey, the solo exploration, none yeah. of that stuff bothers me. I want to get involved. And then I hear about the win rate and how punishing it is and the idea that you're constantly going to be defeated and pushed down. And, mm -hmm. and I don't, I have no interest. I want to try this game and the punishing, the degree to which it is a punishing experience in which you will Listen. not survive does not intrigue me in the slightest. Life is hard and that's okay. Okay. And speaking of which, we'll move on to the next one, which is the least impassioned <laughs> that can be. <laughs> Russian Railroads. Go ahead. Try it. Russian Railroads. I don't even need to defend this one. Have you played it? Oh, yeah. I've Do you like this. it? Yeah, it's great. Oh, I mean, I guess you don't need to defend it because people will defend it for you. Russian Railroads yeah. is a game that I have played time and time again. And uh -huh. if you want to play a game that is in this genre, that is much better, just play Kalis or Kalis 1303. Russian Railroad gives you zero degree of luck in this game. This is all trying to figure out how to optimize your yeah. way towards a perfect ending. Wait, what's what? wrong with zero degree of luck there's nothing i mean you want some degree of unknown this do is you a, yes this is a game that every single time you play it, it's the exact same game nothing shifts oh, nothing pivots. but it's such a good puzzle it's, no it's the same puzzle every single time it's the same thing nothing changes in there's any so many way. different tracks and, and, and ways that you can experiment and with you how have you're... to go all in on tracks you can't mix sure. it up sure so it's basically the question of okay do i want to go all in the top track the middle track or the bottom track and, and how efficient are you going to be and how are you going to this game is literally do I want to play the top, the bottom, or the middle of this game? And then just going all in on that. Yeah. There's no room for, for min-maxing. There's no room for mixing the different strategies. I'm just going to just, just scoot away from the comment section on this one. <laughs> distancing yourself be a wise choice. <laughs> there is no room mm -hmm. for any degree of strategy past one, two, or three in this game. And then pursuing it as hard and as you can. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do own, uh, I believe, uh, German two, two of the three of the expansions. I haven't tried it. Uh, I, so I do, I do own two of the three of the expansions. I haven't been able to find the, uh, the third one. And I did go out of my way to purchase this game after playing it. So, you know, I'm on your side. I, I would play this game again for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. Unlike some of the many games that fall into the category, I wouldn't play again. Not many. I'm, I'm like the few of which you happen to own most of them. This is a game I would happily play again. Yeah. But, but, but I would, I would enjoy the process of building up that track, but I'd rather play a game that actually gives me choice as opposed to one, two or three, enjoy the rest of the game. This is Catan for gamers. People talk about Catan as like initial setup and then just pursuing the obvious hey, strategy wait. after that. What's wrong with Catan? It's a solid choice. And this is for people who want, let's just decide the start of the game, 
and then play it out for the rest of the story, <laughs> for the rest of my two hours of my life. Let's just play out what I started. This is for Catan, for people who think Catan isn't heavy enough. It is a solid game, no. one worth trying, uh -huh. just so you can agree with me. <laughs> All right, buddy. What else do you got in there? Is this what it feels like to be attacked? I'm going to be attacked. This is, this is okay. Next up. <sighs> Next up. One that I would play again, but I do not love... That one just has miniatures in it, by the way. Rackbusters. <laughs> and this is the empty box with miniatures in it. Yeah. Rackbusters. Have you played this one? I have played this one. And what do you think? I have played this one. I like... They They are currently releasing a brand new compendium and rulebook. Yep. I think the compendium... I think the rulebook was the weakest part of this game. Uh, I okay. like. I like the pressure. I like the sound. I like the dungeon crawl. I like the scenarios I've played. Uh, there is a lot here that is working. I think it is the translation that was the weakest part. I will agree with parts of what you said. Okay. I think there's a lot here that's working. This game pulled me in. This is one of my most excited Kickstarters that I was interested in getting. Okay. And again, would not turn it down playing it again. Would not. Again, most of these games, you have a solid collection. Sure. In fact, number 10 in particular is a game I'm still actively playing, yet it's horrible. Anyways, moving on from there. Number 10, I keep enjoying this tease. So, this game, Rathbusters, is a game that... The rulebook was one problem. And I, I know about the released compendium and all the stuff coming up, and I'm excited. Sure. But for me, there were too many aspects to the stealth mechanic that just felt like drawing cards, drawing cards, doing a check, drawing cards, rolling dice, doing a check. Everything you do in this game triggers a noise check. I think there was so much promise well, in yeah, what they were I mean, trying exactly. to do. That was, that was the, the whole idea no, of it, right? everything. Like, the game is 90% checking sure. for noise and 10% playing the game. I mean, I'm exaggerating as, a little but bit. But as that pressure point ramps up and then it becomes a, a, a hit the button and finish your task and get out. I, I I don't know. It felt it felt like there was a solid solid. Game I did here. not I did not feel the tedium in the noise check as much as maybe you. I have. I did not like it at all. I, I gave, don't agree I, with I, that. I call I gave it three or four plays, and I was like, this is this is this is interesting. Yeah. I love the world. I love the miniatures. I love the art. I feel. See, I found I found the iconography more frustrating and difficult. I was cool with that. Um, no, you're right. The equipment. The equipment you have to basically reference the rule book. That, yeah. that. Yeah. I found that more frustrating and difficult, but I did not have any problem with the on-map experience of this. I, I, th I thought there was, again, this is a solid game. Make no mistake. I would never turn this down. Yeah. But the idea of playing this when I can play other games in this zombie crawl dungeon thing, you like, you get games like Cthulhu May Die, games like a Zombicide Black Plague. Oh, but Zombicide is on your list of terrible games. Oh, it will be on yours when you <laughs> play it with me. But this one, honestly, I I'd play Rackbusters with you. I'd be willing to do that at some point. Yeah, that'd be but fun. That'd be intriguing. It's Rackbusters is a game that maybe you'd have like. more fun of it with it with it with me. Very possibly. And with the new rule book, the new companion. Very, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll maybe yeah. we'll book that in. Because I do have to. Be, I do have to admit, I held off on experiencing this game for the new release rules. Interesting. I did. We dug into it. Jan and I went up against the big bad guy one time, uh, and there was enough rules checking and and just trying to figure out the process. That we pulled back until the new rules were released. Rackbusters falls into the category of a game that if they released Rackbusters 2.0 in a Kickstarter You'd be and slightly tweak things, sure. I'd be very pumped. There's a game, sure. Rum and Bones by Kulmini Not, that the second edition was basically the same idea as the first edition, but streamlining Executed a lot better. of things. Yeah. If they did a Rackbusters 2.0, I'd, I'd probably be all in despite myself because I love the world, I love the miniatures, I yep. love the, what's it called? There's a weird a weird war, I think it's called. Weird war when you have Nazis and all zombies. It's called oh, sure, war. sure, sure. Yeah. I like, I like everything about the game. I just felt the gameplay itself was very tempting, very promising, and just, just not where I needed it to be for it to stay in my collection. I hear you. I still like killing Nazis. Yeah. Well, that's... I mean, I'm not going to speak there. <laughs> Speaking of, cool many or not, Massive Darkness. Okay. Yes. I was debating whether to pick this one or not, uh -huh. because... Yeah, I, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You're bringing this one up to the table... After two has been released, and I That's have played two. That's why I'm bringing it to the table. This game, this game has no. I mean, other than the fact that the miniatures could be deposited into two, which is why I still own this, is the only justification for still having massive darkness. Speaking period. of which, eight, nine, and ten. This is eight. Eight, nine, and ten are games that I still own and still okay. plan on owning. Okay. So eight is massive darkness, like you said already. Yeah. For me, this was always a game that I thought was. Going back to the what I just talked about, Rackbusters. There were aspects of the gameplay that I felt were just dice upping and min-maxing. Like, oh, yeah. you roll two more dice, you roll one less dice. It's just a whole bunch of calculations this, of dice. This came into my collection when I was looking for the promise of an RPG yep. without people. And, and I still like it. But I liked it kind of as a guilty pleasure. This very much falls into the category of guilty pleasure. Games I probably should get rid of and didn't. The miniatures were amazing. Mm -hmm. The dungeon crawl was fun. But then there's just too much just counting dice and things and stats. and sure. a lot of, Without a lot of interesting. It wasn't like, oh, you pull this character three places towards you. Dogs! You got no respect! For this game, apparently. 
Exactly. This is your channel. I don't I have, have to don't cut edit. it out. No edit. I just figured I'd uh, yell no. at Heidi. By all means. We've, we've got three great Pyrenees downstairs. You're here in Kentucky uh, filming a, a slew of videos with me, and the dog has got no respect. Including my most disliked video ever. That's when we cover 10. Anyways, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. It's going to be a letdown at this point. Massive Darkness. It probably will be at this point. A solid game yeah. that I still own, but I have had no incentive You own it because it's out. an expansion for Massive Darkness 2. No. No, I owned it before. Before yeah. Massive Darkness no, no, 2. No, I'm saying, I'm saying though, now at this you point, own it because it's an expansion for Massive Darkness correct. 2. Correct. I have no which intention. Which is why I still own it as well. I have no intention of ever playing Massive Darkness 1 with the regular rules ever again. No, there's no point. No point at all. Better games have been made. Including Massive Darkness 2. Number 9. Dale of Merchants. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. I own this game. Uh-huh. I still plan on getting this big box that I'm about to critique. <laughs> and yet, I have so many complaints <laughs> against it. Uh-huh. You, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? Uh, no, okay. just... So, uh -huh. Dale of Merchants. Yeah? I think Dale of Merchants is an excellent deck builder. It's one that you should add to your collection. It is whimsical. It is charming. There are degrees of mixing up the various creatures to suit your play style. Whether you want something more confrontational, less confrontational, a little bit random. So many Take options your hands off that game. of what you can do How in this game. You? How dare you? And yet, here's my problem with the game. Okay? I like the game. I'm, I, I frequently make any rid of it, but it's still in my collection. I'm not listening charming. to you. What's your problem with this game? Why is it on this list? I feel that 90% of the game just comes down to cycling through cards, building stalls, and the abilities barely matter. They're fun, but they barely actually matter. It's too easy to just get to the cards you need. The actual trying to get... There are deck builders out there where you have to struggle to buy the expensive cards. This is not one of those. You buy that five, it goes straight into your hand. You use it to buy the next five, the next five, the next five, cycle it up, get a few cards, play your stalls. The game is over before it begins. The, the, this, the economy of the game does not matter. Those abilities that let you pull cards from the row don't matter because you could just use that five to buy any card you want again and again and again. There's so much about this game that is fun, and yet it is ruined by an economy that is just not challenging enough. Go ahead. Now your turn. He's not going to say anything. How many times have you played this? I have played Dale of Merchants at least 10 times. I don't know exactly how many, but somewhere in the range of 10 to 15. How diverse do you make your decks? I don't know what that means. Do you try a whole plethora of different of different types of interactions? I have different creatures every time I play. I yeah. always mix it up. Always. The economy does not matter. You, you, when you take that five, when you find, when you earn that three, you can immediately use it to buy the next card. Am I missing sure. Am I playing it wrong? You, not until the next round. No, it goes straight yeah, into your hand. It goes into so, your hand. So the next you need to buy the next card. There's no, there's no death, not death. There's no challenge to acquiring cards from the cargo. None whatsoever. They took the economy aspect out of the game and then occasionally no, there, give you abilities there, that you take there cards. Are, there, are certainly, there are certainly cards that are hard to get. You are certainly spending and cycling cards in a way that makes it harder. Like, you're, you're getting them out of your hand if you're buying. Yep. You're also spending cards that have tactics and abilities that allow you to manipulate, utilize, roll dice, spend points. Yep. Like, you're wrong. I mean, you're just wrong. I, I, I mean, I like the game. Don't get me wrong. I think, I think for me... Do you game, just sit down and just... like I'm assuming you sit down with a calculator and you do the exact math that it takes to go to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 probably, to 5. Probably. And I'm sitting here going like, I'll steal 12 cards from your hand probably. throughout the course of the game. Right, we should play this together sometime. Because I'm curious to see whether... I would want I want you to destroy me. Uh -huh. I want you to use those abilities against me and destroy me if, while I if simply we, go for the if cards. If we played this yes. and I won... I will take everything I said back. This goes off your list? This goes off my list. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, apparently we added something to our schedule today. Uh -huh. Maybe. We'll see. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm so... Th I'm, I cannot believe that's on your list, it's first a, off. It is... And, and Jan's going to be pissed, too, for, that's the, okay. for the record. Listen, and I... third off, and third off, I'm glad Board Game Co. is not in the third expansion of this game, because the Quackalope community Are you got really? us in. So, our community voted for the wood duck to be the bird that was added to the player board of the third expansion. Solid. So he drew a wood, a wood duck with a little paddle behind it, a bunch of baby nice. ducks, and then has a tree branch that show, yeah, that looks like mind. horns. I own both the thingies. I need to get that merchant, that big deluxe I'm, I'm just throwing it out. I like, will get more stuff for the game. And yet I feel like there's, so, I feel oh this game gosh. is a, 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 a not, I feel this game is a 10 in what it is trying to be. And the lack of any reasonable economy in the game has shrunk it to a seven or an eight for me. Still like it. Still in my collection. I still recommend it to people as a go-to uh -huh. starter deck builder. But then I, I just want more economy. I want more challenge in that game. Which brings us to number it's 10. It's such a gem of a game. Number 10 is going to be Root. <clears throat> is it a letdown yet? Is it a letdown yet? <laughs> I mean, it's... 
uh, it's not necessarily a letdown until I hear what you're going to say sure. about this game. Because, like, if it isn't, if you can't back this up, oh, if, I will this back is, this if this up. is just here, l listen to me, comment section, listen. If this is just here, no. for the sake of being here. Absolutely not. Do I look like Jesse? I mean, do I look like the kind of person who would do that? This is here because Root mm -hmm. is the worst game that I still really enjoy playing. What do you mean the worst game that you still really enjoy playing? I can critique it from today until tomorrow as to why it should be horrible. It is It is enjoyable. I do like it. I, I have, Every time I've played it, I've played this three times in the past 48 hours. I will continue to play it. And the evolving expansions and roles and all these factions do mix the game up in a lot of ways. That makes it a puzzle to figure out every time. And I like puzzles. I'm a big fan of puzzles. And yet, I think I should hate this game. Why? Okay, let's go through it. Let's go through it one at a time. To begin with, this is a game that if you don't give people a strategy guide of how to play their faction, then you can lose because people just didn't know what to do. Meaning, this is any game has that risk of, of someone can walk in and tank it. I can sure. attack you it and becomes, lose a game. The first, the first play is a teaching game, and it becomes better and better as you go. But it's not unless you're a good teacher and can work people through like general strategy and and, and I don't aid a mind bit. a teaching game. I mind the fact that this game is an exercise in playing to your role and doing what you have to do to maintain the balance of the game, or else someone will get a win. It's not about me sure. winning. It's about me, me playing that predefined, pre-scripted role of how I have to self-balance for the factions to balance and work. Otherwise, well, the Vagabond will win because nobody stopped the Vagabond when they were supposed to. I can't play my game. I have to play the game they made me play. Oh, come that on. That is horrific. You're given a puzzle and your job is to no, be No, you're not given a puzzle. You're given a job. You're given a job you're in this game. As efficient as possible with the systems that you have in yes, play. Yes, correct. You're given a job that's about 90% here's what you have to do, and 10% of here's how you can optimize around that to the victory. Mm -hmm. That's what this game is. And respond and react and engage with other players and the make out of the board and the, the, the maps you're playing on and the environment and cards that you have. 90 all changes that equation. 90% your responsibility, 10% how you win. There is that 10%. I play this game, I challenge it, I puzzle it. Another thing I don't like with the game, it's not... It's not balanced. The factions don't have a clear balance. There are factions that are harder and easier to win, which is sure. and to a reasonable degree, not like a you know a one percent difference. Sure. In terms of win rate, the the cats, the the what are the camera the name the the Marquis de Cat mm -hmm. has a harder time winning than any other faction. The Vagabond and the Within Alliance have a much easier time. The Iri fall a little bit in the middle. Sure. So like if I lose as the Marquis de Cat, that that feels scripted. It feels like that the odds are set against me. If I win as the Vagabond of the Woodland Alliance, it feels like I got the easier faction. It takes away some of that, that aspect of reward and failure, of punishment, of I played a game well or poorly. No, I got handed a role. Now, to be fair, to give credit where credit is due, when you win as the Marquis de Cat, mm. it does feel like you did something well. Out. Just Alex Board Game Co goes up against Root. Now, do you know why I still own this game? There's only one reason. I have no reason. Because of the expansions. Sure. Because everything I just said is 100% critique to me against the base game. When you add in the expansions, it adds in enough of a change to the puzzle, a lack of the script, a lack of the 14,000 strategy guys of how those four core factions interact, that the expansions to me make it a constantly fresh puzzle. You sure. throw the lizard folk against the Marquis de Cat and one Vagabond and the Otters, I don't know who's supposed to win anymore. I no longer know what exactly I'm supposed to do. Now that puzzle is on the table and I can actually experience it and enjoy it without the knowledge of what I have to do, who's supposed to win, who has a better chance. Mm -hmm. Root has so much promise. It is an incredible game. I own it. I play it. I own all the expansions. I want more. I can't wait for them to be more expansions. Mm -hmm. And yet it's 90% job and 10% how do I win with the job I was given. <laughs> You're wrong, but that's okay. Yeah. Fun fact, this is one of the few times I agree to shut up and sit down. I was going to say, you, uh, so shut up and sit down, uh, who have opinions that are vastly wrong. Different than our own. Uh, oh, very different. Sorry, that's own. a better way to say yes. it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Vastly yeah. different than our own. Yes. Uh, they, they thought that the, the charm of this game was the messiness of it. Maintaining messy was how you maintained the game. I believe the way they put it was the game is fun while you learn what you have to do. Sure. And then you learn what you have to do and the game's over. Yeah. And I agree to an extent. I, I don't. I don't. I genuinely have continued to play base game, uh, I, I, no, granted, I'll I mix it. in. I'll play basically. I mix in Vagamount of Partisans. I mix in all the expansions. I love the modules. My last three games the past 40 hours were all base game. I'll still play base game. Yeah. I still enjoy it. Yeah. But there's always a degree of, okay, I lost this Marquita Cat. Whatever. No. Yes. You, it's, it, you're, you're engaged with the puzzle. It is, I mean, if you're playing Marquita Cat, you start off with, like, you start off with the entire map 
which means that like the odds are set against you and and the, the balance is not as extreme as maybe you'd venture to say it is more the perception of the of the ground it is how you uh manipulate and talk and negotiate and move around this board this game becomes this game is probably the game that becomes better with age uh in my entire collection. I mean, the more times I play this game, every experience I have that supplements and goes expands upon that first experience, even with base game, has become heightened and better. It is a better puzzle. It is a more informed puzzle. It is more an engaged community that knows what tricks were played last time. This is, I mean... I, I like the game, but here, here's my thing with games. Yeah. When I don't like a game, I'm a big fan of being able to precisely say what it is I did not like. Sure. I don't just say, I don't like saying I don't like the game. Especially, mm -hmm. but, but this is even before I did reviewed games, but like, I like being able to say, I did not enjoy this experience because of X, Y, and Z. Root is the opposite for me. Root is a game that I like, and yet every single box I check is telling me why I shouldn't like it. Mm -hmm. And yet I do enjoy it every time I play. Base game alone. It, learning the game is fun. But learning the game... You, no, 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 no. Learning the game is not fun. Playing the game is fun. But once you... I'm saying... Shut up and sit down style. Yeah. Learning the game. The new venture of it is fun. Yes. But once you know... Once you understand the mechanics, the roles, the fact that the Eerie is a programming game, the Vagabond is going to be this weird negotiation. I do love the Eerie, by the way. Favorite faction, hands down. The best stress I've ever experienced yes. in a board game. The Vagabond is going to be this negotiation between uh, you trading and other players, with people and other players. Moving their hordes around the board while they try to attack you just so you can kill them so you can no longer the be Mokita allied. The Cat is going to start at a disadvantage because they already control the forest. I mean, repositioning, deploying, yep. keeping your production chains up and running. And then you have the virus that's being spread it the the woodland alliance that wants to pop up and explode you gotta in keep locations. those guys down or they will destroy you as you know this game and play it again and again with the same group of people those roles those different environments that you're those playing jobs. In, you mean and jobs. the interaction between players is so good the interaction is excellent the choices are excellent the job you are assigned when you are theoretically spending time with your friends is mostly excellent but 90 percent work 10 percent fun Root is a solid game that I thoroughly enjoy, uh -huh. and yet really, I hear you. You're not really gonna is. you're not gonna save yourself from the comment section. No, I'm okay with that. I the like only this game. the only thing that I'm disappointed in yes. is this is on Board Game Co's channel instead of Quackalopes. Because our community, more our community would rip you apart. Send them over. <laughs> I believe you and I might be I have, playing this. I have sent I have sent them over to you, and yeah, I believe we are playing, which means I will be bringing this up. Yep. At the start of our two-player session. By all means. By all means. <laughs> Root is a solid, solid experience that I will get every single expansion that they have. And I will continuously complain about the game that is is being forced upon me that I enjoy despite myself. And that's my number 10. Genuinely meant... And by the way, in case you think this was mirror, like me pulling out Root for you, I have played this game three times in the past 48 hours. I will give you the phone numbers of every person I've played it with. I have been complaining about this game every single time <laughs> as I play it. As I play it, I've been like complaining. I'm like, just to be clear, I, I won one of those games, which mm -hmm. I mean, I won we didn't finish because with I actually who? had to leave to you. With who? What do you mean with who? My friend group. No, what group. what role did you Oh, win? I won as the Vagabond. Less satisfying. Sure. I'd rather win as the Marquis de Cat, which I never have. So I won as the Iron, I won as the Vagabond. I have not played the Wooden Alliance in a long time. It just sounds remember. like you're bad at playing the cats. That's, um, yeah, that's what I hear. But yeah, it's a solid game. I complain about it, and I'll keep getting all the expansions. And that are the 10 worst games in Quackalope's collection. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was immensely fun for me and entertaining. Bring on the likes, the comments, the dislikes, the dislikes too, which I found out today apparently are not as beneficial as you thought, but potentially. It's weird. Dislikes don't necessarily hurt your record as a channel, but yep. what they could hurt is the audience who is choosing to dislike your video. YouTube, if they're a heavy consumer of content, meaning they're subscribed to multiple channels, yep. may disincentivize sharing your content to that person. with someone who, who dislikes your video. Oh, so if you want to see less of my videos show up on your feed, yeah. That's just true. like away. It's, it's a mutually beneficial. Yep. That's and true. in the meantime, accurate. And as always, have a good one.